welcome back to another video i hope you're all well and being safe and following whatever rules are in place wherever you are <laughs> so anyway here i am doing my own nails so as you've just saw i just popped on some tips um i'm now just cutting them down to the length that i want i always go for coffin over stiletto so i was going to leave them how they are but then i thought no let's just go for coffin so i'm just matching up the tips um as best i can not really that bothered about it because to be honest i am just going to be doing my own nails quite a lot during lockdown so i am going to be redoing these nails probably pretty soon so not too bothered about them being absolutely perfect to be fair so i'm just filing the tips into shape um i do speed this bit up a bit because to be honest it just gets really really boring watching the same thing for so long so i'm just giving them a quick file just to make sure they're nice the side walls are nice and like straight out from my nail because obviously these tips were not specifically made for me so i need to make them as close to it as possible so once i've done that i'm just going in so now i'm just going to show you which products i'm using and then i'm going to put some pictures just on the screen just to see what they look like they're all absolutely beautiful just like everything else that tears beauty sell um as always you can use my discount code for 10 percent off which is beauty matters 10 in capital letters it's always in the description box along with the link to the website if you'd like to buy anything Anyway, got that out of the way. I'm also using Sparkle Supplies UK Purple Gems in this video. I am so excited to use these because their crystals are just so, so nice. They're all so shiny and the coloured ones are just stunning. I'm now going to pop on some acrylic uh, in clear just as a little base. I'm not actually putting it over the whole tip like I would if it was a client. I'm just applying it to my natural nail just so I don't have any staining. Because um, like I said, I'm not going to be keeping these nails on for very long. Um, but they'll be on long enough to cause stains if I don't clear coat first so it's almost like a sandwich we're going to do clear coat then our design then clear on top and then when it comes to a redesign you can always file back down to your original clear layer and start again and no one will know that purple design was ever there so i'm just going in here with a marble i didn't want something too like in your face marbly like i was thinking of putting white in then i changed it to a lilac because i didn't want it that obvious um, I really really loved the way it turned out because I used some of Tia's Beauty Flakes as well, the periwinkle ones which are a purple undertone and they were absolutely stunning. They looked, to be honest, I'm not going to lie to you, they looked really rubbish when I put them on and I was a bit like, oh this is a bit rubbish. But then when you turn your nails like to the sides and stuff, they reflect a lot. So if you see me like moving my hands around in weird positions, like it's because I'm trying to get you to be able to see the flakes. Because head on they don't really look that great, they just look like just normal flakes but then when you move that's when they reflect so anyway i'm just going in with some wet beads i used a size six brush for this whole set um <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> the main reason i wanted to do it is because i wanted it to be like i don't know i just didn't want to do it too quick if that makes any sense like, i didn't want to throw on a load of acrylic and then it'd be over with like because i'm recording it and it's like a tutorial like slash how to kind of video i thought it'd be more likely that you'd be able to see what i'm doing if i used a smaller brush because then it would take me longer and i'd have to do bit by bit which is yeah quite helpful for a tutorial so here you can see i'm just popping on those flakes if you look from this angle they look really odd and then when i move to the slot to the side and stuff like that they really reflect really nicely and very purple so I was happy overall with the end product so anyway once i've done this nail i'm then going to move on to i think my i think it's my index finger i start that one off because that's going to be a three like a three color ombre um almost thought of i wasn't really too bothered about the uh the blend as such even though i've faffed about with it for so so long so you'd think that i was but i was covering it up with some glitter anyway so it wasn't didn't have to be a hundred percent and then I go on to the ring finger nail, um, which is going to be like a sort of like a glitter ombre of the two glitters that I'm using. Because obviously, like I showed you at the beginning, I'm using Amethyst Surprise and, oh my god, my mind's gone blank. I can't remember the name of the other one, but I was using two different ones. Was it Purple Passion? Something like that? Purple something? I don't know. Something like that. But because I was using two different ones, I just thought it looked good to use two of them in the same nail. Because well you can never have too much glitter so you don't really need a reason for it <laughs> so i'm just popping a little bit of color on the nail here just so i've got like a base for my glitter to go on top of as it would be a little bit transparent which isn't a problem if you want transparent but i didn't so i popped a little bit of color underneath and then i'm just building it up with a So 
So I just popped a couple of these really cute purple butterflies in as well. Um, just putting some of the flakes on as well just to make give it like the same effect as the rest of the nails so it all ties into each other but the butterflies are so so cute I didn't realize I'd got any purple ones so I had a proper dig through my drawers um, and I think they came in one of my Amazon hauls um, I can't remember which one it was if you've seen it obviously then you'll remember but there was one haul where I bought like 10 of those 12 grid things and I'm pretty sure they must have came with that like one of those 10 grids because I don't really remember them and the only time I don't remember something is when I buy it off Amazon because I buy that much off Amazon all at the same time I never really remember what's there <laughs> I just put it in my drawer and then that's that so I'm quite glad I had a search through my drawer and found those because I was going to use black butterflies and I'm just looking at my nails now in front of me and I don't think the black would have really gone very well I'd have had to put some sort of black in there as well maybe hmm, I don't know anyway so i didn't use the black i used these purple ones they're really really cute i'm just filling any gaps here um making sure that everywhere is covered and it's exactly how i want it before i move on to the next nail Okay, so next up is my index finger. I faffed about with this nail for way too long. It really wasn't necessary because like I said at the beginning, I am going over it anyway with glitter. So it really wasn't really like, I don't know. I don't know why I allowed it to get so out of hand. I ended up speeding up a load of this nail because I literally spent so much time on it for no reason. <laughs> I got really carried away with it. I wanted the blend absolutely perfect. And then I'd get it to where I wanted it and then I'd be like, no, it's not quite perfect yet. So I'd put a bit more somewhere and then it'd ruin it. And then I ended up doing it again. Oh my God, it was an absolute nightmare. I don't know why I went into so much detail considering two reasons. Like one, I'm covering it up and two, I'm taking them off really soon. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just find shimmers really difficult to blend because they just get everywhere. That was my main problem with that nail. Next time I do it, I'll do it with a plain colour instead, like just a solid colour. So while I'm waiting for that middle colour of the ombre to set I'm just adding some more glitter to the middle marble nail because I just looked at it and I was like you know what that is not even nearly as glittery as I want it to be so I'm just adding a few more a few flakes as well and a no I didn't I was going to say another butterfly but I didn't that was the wrong nail so yeah just finishing that one off while that one sets and then I can go back into the ombre nail and finish off with the lilac at the cuticle area which I also believe it or not faffed about with too much so yeah this index nail was just really not worth the hassle that I put into it, to be fair. But it also didn't need to be as, like, distressing as I made it out to be. <laughs> but anyway, don't let it put you off a 3 away ombre. They're really not this difficult. It's just me being, being tricky. Also didn't help that I kept picking up bits of glitter off my paper towel by accident into my glitter, into my brush, and then adding it onto that. <sighs> I just had a mare with this nail, I'm not going to lie. But it turned out really, really nice. I'm looking at it now and I really like it. So thank God I do. Else I'd have been really miffed if I'd have spent that much time on it and then hated it anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I did really like it. It came out really nice. So we'll, uh, we'll bypass how much effort it was. So obviously when I finished messing about with that index finger for way too long and then went on to my pinky nail, I knew that I wanted to use obviously those purple gems in this set and I started to look at them after the first three and I was thinking how on earth am I going to do a nail 
that isn't going to be overboard with gems on. <laughs> so I ended up just doing a glitter fade on this one. I, I don't know why, but I automatically, when I do glitter fades, um, fade them from the cuticle to free edge instead of the other way around. I don't know why, but I just suddenly thought, like, you know what? Why don't I just do it the other way around instead of making my life difficult? So I did it the other way around, and then that gave me space in the cuticle area to put some gems. Obviously, I didn't use very many because I didn't want to go overboard and it look overkill because there is a lot going on with these nails so i just stuck to two like a nice medium one and a small one and it just tied them in because obviously that little finger didn't have any of the dark purple in i think it's called purple haze or something like that didn't have any of that one in it um just the lilac so i thought if i put some dark gems on it'll kind of tie them in tie it into the other dark nails basically so that was that i don't know why it took me so long to explain but there you go so i'm just doing my glitter fade it's really super easy just throwing a load of glitter on the on the like free edge of the nail and blending it backwards Once I'd finished faffing with the pinky nail and getting that exactly how I want it, I added some glitter, like I said I was going to, to this index finger, just in like a, I don't really know how to explain the shape, it was just a bit random really. Um, I just came from the cuticle area and then just did a, a squiggly line basically. Um, I just made sure that I did the middle bit first, just to make sure that I got some glitter where I wanted it, because if I'd have started at the free edge or the cuticle area, I'd have ended up putting the glitter somewhere completely bonkers and it wouldn't have gone how I wanted it. So I just did the middle bit and then basically linked it to where I wanted it. So I popped the glitter on, I did the darker glitter first, which I think is Purple Passion, and then I put Amethyst Surprise on top, and then I put a couple of butterflies just to tie it in with the rest of the nails. And then I think after that it's just capping, so I'm not going to go really into like too much talking in that area because obviously you can see exactly what I'm doing. I did a lot of capping in this video, it looked a lot of effort, it was because I was using a size 6 brush and the nails were stupidly long. <laughs> I would usually use a larger brush to cap, especially nails this long, like you could easily do this in like one bead or two, like whatever you'd usually do, you could easily do that, but I don't see anything wrong with doing multiple beads, it just... The more effort you put into your application of your capping with your clear acrylic at the end like the better because one obviously your capping is really really important because it stops you falling off your design and secondly it's really important because it's your strength like you should be working pretty like thin with your colors because one you don't really want to waste your colors and two like they're not majority of the time colors are not strength powders obviously if you use a brand where they are then that's great but i still wouldn't use them as a strength powder just because it is i just see it as a waste like i like to keep my colors <laughs> as much as i can um so capping is really really important to build your structure of the nail as well and have the strength there so why not put a lot of effort into it <laughs> prevents a lot of filing at the end as well so that's always good
Okay, so just showing you a quick side view here of what they look like at the moment. Um, they're not particularly like mega bumpy, considering I was working in a freezing cold room. That's the main problem I had today is that my my room was freezing. And because I've been filming all day, like different videos at the same time that I needed the sound on, I didn't want the noise of the, f the heater in the background. And I don't like putting the central heating on in the whole house just for me to be in one room. So I just sat freezing and struggled with my acrylic, basically. <laughs> but I'm showing you how I file like both ways, like one with an e-file with my sanding band and one without. Some people use like carbide bits or whatever, ceramic, whatever you want to use for this. I just use a sanding band and that is one of the beaut like the great things of putting effort into your application and getting it smooth because then you don't have to mess about as much with an e-file at the end or your hand file. So this is how I do it with an e-file. Make sure that you're looking at it from all angles to make sure it's perfect from every angle you can see it from. And then... I will also show you how I do my hand filing, which is really, really similar to my e-filing technique. Like, I just basically do the exact same thing to get the same outcome. And then I will do the rest of the filing and we'll come back and top coat, which is just the best stage. Okay, so instead of buffing, I never really buff because I always get too worried that I'm going to buff it too smooth and then the top coat is not going to stick. So I've always just wiped over with acetone, well, prep and dehydrate at the moment, but I do use acetone as well. Like literally just give it a wipe over and then leave them. Like don't try and dry them with a dry wipe or anything like that. Just literally wipe over and let the acetone set itself because then that will very gently melt the top like of the acrylic and it will kind of melt away all the scratches, but it will leave like... A sort of tacky layer for the gel polish to stick to like the gel top coat so I always find this works really well for me I've never had any problems any peeling or lifting or anything of the gel top coat so if it doesn't work for you obviously don't do it do whatever does work for you but it does work for me so that's what I always do so it's finally top coating time the best time of the whole video I absolutely loved top coating these it was like just the best thing ever just sitting back and just top coating and watching them come to life like that's the best thing about an acrylic design is it's so dull for so long and then suddenly they just come back <laughs> so anyway um all i've got left to do is apply the gems and you can see exactly how i do that i did plan on putting a lot more on than i ended up so i've got way too much give me strength all over the place but obviously you can apply your gems whatever you use as well i'll just use give me strength because it's easy and it works wonders so yeah, I'm going to end it here for the voiceover. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumbs up if you did so I know to do these more often. If you have any ideas of what colour you'd like my next set to be, please let me know because I'm always up for some inspo. The only reason I did purple for the first set of lockdown is because purple is my favourite colour. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll use my favourite colour first, then we'll use anything after that second. So yeah. Let me know if you've got any suggestions. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different for me, but just wanted to show that I can do acrylic designs as well. I just don't really have the clientele for it. Most of my clients prefer gel polish on top because it infills are much easier. But I do think acrylic designs can look beautiful. So again, thank you so much and I'll be back soon. Bye.